Today we're visiting with big game supervisor Bruce Dillings and we're going to talk about the recent aerial pronghorn surveys. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Bruce, tell our viewers, how are these pronghorn aerial surveys conducted? Yeah, we monitor our pronghorn population using an aerial survey technique uh, using fixed wing aircraft. Uh, this is conducted the end of June through early July. Uh, we have five different teams that are stationed throughout pronghorn range. Uh, it's a very uh, labor intensive project. We cover over 16,000 square miles during this short time period and we actually uh, collected over 200 survey hours in this effort. Bruce, what did we find out this year with the aerial surveys and how do our numbers compare this year to last year? Yeah, we, we just completed our pronghorn survey on July 12th and overall the population is down about 8% from last year. We're still at a really good level at about 9,500 animals, but that is down just a bit from last year. Uh, the fawn to doe ratio was 52 fawns per 100 does and again this was lower than last year and lower than our uh, long-term average so that's kind of where we we fell short with the, the reduced fawn to doe ratios this year and and that kind of got set up with the low moisture we had last fall not a lot of precip in the winter so we went into this spring with not a lot of residual cover and then of course we didn't get much of any precip this spring for new growth. So we really didn't have those vegetative conditions needed for good fawning cover. And that certainly showed up in our, our fawn to doe ratio. Okay, and how many licenses this year compared to last year? Yeah, this year we're gonna see 1,715 licenses available in the lottery. And this is about 75 fewer than last year. And it's, it's certainly still a good, good healthy number for a North Dakota pronghorn season. Uh, most of the reductions are occurring down in hunting unit 4A in the extreme southwest part of the state. Okay, uh, besides lower license numbers this year, any other changes? Things are uh, pretty much the same as last season. We did do some early survey work to see if we could reopen those last two units that have been closed to hunting. We did some survey work north of I-94 in the New Salem area and then also north of the Kildeer area. But we found that we just didn't have the numbers to be able to open a season this year. Uh, we did increase doe licenses in a couple units, uh, 3B and 6A. Those are areas that have pretty good densities, pretty good numbers of pronghorn. They're also units that have rangeland conditions that aren't great. So we really wanna make sure we're meeting the number of animals that could be supported going into this winter so we're going to provide some opportunities in in some extra doe licenses these units had doe fawn licenses in the previous years uh hunting unit 3b did not so there'll be just a limited number of doe licenses this year i think it's the first year of having doe licenses since 2009 but 6a did have doe licenses last year but that unit did show a pretty healthy increase and so we're taking advantage of that and in increasing those doe licenses. Bruce, how do we determine the amount of licenses available? Yeah, so we have population objective ranges established for each of the four major management regions. And this is based on the number of animals that could be supported through a normal North Dakota winter and that are also tolerant to area landowners. And so once the, the survey is complete and we see the results and, and where that number falls into that range, then we make harvest recommendations accordingly. Okay, and what does it take to keep the pronghorn population going in the right direction? Right, right, right. We're gonna certainly need to see this drought condition break. Uh, rangeland conditions are really poor, and that certainly showed up in our fawn to doe ratios this summer. So we're gonna see, need to see some late summer, uh, fall moisture, and then we're gonna need to see some precip during the winter. Uh, we certainly don't wanna see a devastating, severe North Dakota winter that can have huge impacts on the population, but we need to see some, some moisture from end of this summer through winter to put us into a better condition for next spring for fawning conditions, and then certainly gonna need those timely spring rains for uh, new vegetative growth for, 
for improved haunting conditions. A lot of great information, Bruce. Thank you. Thanks.